situation remains very serious. Priority now is to overcome the crisis. We are also planning ahead. The IAEA is doing everything in its power to help Japan. Let me elaborate a little. The crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi plant has still not been overcome and it will take some time to stabilize the reactors. For now, radioactivity in the environment, food stuff and water, including the sea, is a matter of concern in the vicinity of the Fukushima plant and beyond. Current levels indicate a need for further comprehensive monitoring. On the positive side, electrical power has been restored at Unit 1, 2 and 3 and fresh water is now available on the site. Since I addressed the special board meeting a week ago, we have put two radiation monitoring teams on the ground in Japan. An FAO IAEA food safety assessment team is also now on the spot, meeting officials in prefectures affected by contamination. In a crisis of this nature, it is vital to provide and share speedy and accurate information. From the beginning, we have been working closely with the Japanese government and with the safety agency, NISA. My visit to Tokyo and the presence of IAEA staff on the ground have improved both the flow of information and the level of mutual understanding of a variety of technical issues. This has been an interactive process. As well as receiving information, we have been asking questions providing advice and obtaining clarifications. On Friday, I took part in a video conference with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the heads of a number of major agencies. I explained that we have been working fully in accordance with the Joint Radiation Emergency Management Plan of the international organizations. The plan is co-sponsored by 15 organizations and the IAEA is the focal coordinating body. Our incident and emergency center has distributed information, channeled offers of cooperation, sent missions to Japan, and coordinated with partners including WHO, FAO, WMO, ICAO, and CTBTO. I will meet the United Nations Secretary General and the heads of agencies again later this week at the Chief Executive's Board meeting in Kenya to strengthen coordination. Ladies and gentlemen, the crisis is not yet over, but we need to start thinking about the future. Once the situation has been stabilized, the agency would like to set an international expert mission to conduct an assessment of the accident. This should include an element of peer review. The Fukushima crisis has confronted the agency and international community with a major challenge. It is vitally important that we learn the right lessons from what happened on March 11th and afterwards in order to strengthen nuclear safety throughout the world. Following my statement at the Board of Governors meeting last week, many countries joined me, joined my call for robust follow-up action. I would therefore like to propose that a high-level IAEA conference on nuclear safety should take place here in Vienna before the summer. The conference should cover the following points. An initial assessment of the Fukushima accident, its impact and consequences. Considering the lessons that need to be learned, launching the process of strengthening nuclear safety and strengthening the response to nuclear accidents and emergencies. The work ahead will be substantial. I firmly believe that the IAEA is the best venue for follow-up on the Fukushima accident. We have the necessary expertise extensive membership and can assure transparency. I will keep you informed 
and count on your full support and coordination. Thank you. Uh, an earthquake of magnitude uh, 6.5 occurred at 22.23 UTC on the 27th of March near the east coast of Honshu. NISA has confirmed that there have been no abnormal radiation readings at the Anagawa nuclear power plant, the closest to the epicenter, whose three units remain in coal shutdown since the earthquake of 11th of March. As of 0230 UTC today, there are no reports of any problems at nuclear plants in Japan related to the, seis the latest seismic event. Overall, as the Director General said, at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, the situation is still very serious. NISA informed the um, Incident and Emergency Center of the agency that a meeting is planned with TEPCO to determine the origin and path of water in the turbine buildings of Units 1 to 4. As seen with the contaminated workers, high dose rates in the turbine buildings and contaminated water in the basements can hamper recovery efforts. The pumping of contaminated water from the basement floor of Unit 1's turbine building into its main condenser is in progress, whereas at Unit 2 that process has not begun because the steam condenser is full. At Unit 3, the pumping of contaminated water, and in particular where it is going, are matters under consideration. The issue is also being examined for Unit 4. Temperatures measured at the feed water nozzle and at the bottom of the reactor pressure vessel continue to decrease slightly. Um, that's at units one and two, except the temperature at the feed water nozzle of unit one's reactor pressure vessel, which has slightly increased to 274 degrees centigrade. A positive development is that the pumping of fresh water into the reactor pressure vessel of unit one is to switch from the use of fire trucks to temporary electrical pumps running on off-site power on the 29th of March, that's tomorrow. At unit, at unit two, this switch was carried out on the 27th of March with a diesel generator as backup in case off-site power is interrupted. Fresh water is also being injected continuously into the reactor pressure vessel of unit three, albeit currently pumped by fire trucks. The switch to temporary electrical pumps for this unit is planned for today. On the 27th of March at Unit 3, water was sprayed into the spent fuel pool using a concrete pump truck and seawater was also pumped in through the, um, through the spent fuel cooling system. It is planned to start pumping fresh water into the spent fuel pool tomorrow. It is also planned to commence pumping fresh water into the spent fuel pool of Unit 4 from tomorrow. Unit 5 and 6 remain in coal shutdown. At noon today in Japan, the three workers mentioned in the previous briefings were released from the National Institute of Radiological Sciences where they had been kept under observation. The result of analysis performed indicates that the level of localised exposure received by two of them is between 2,000 and 3,000 millisieverts i.e. somewhat lower than the previous estimate of 2,000 to 6,000 millisieverts. On the 27th of March, deposition of iodine-131 was detected in nine prefectures and deposition of cesium-137 in four prefectures. The highest values were observed in the prefecture of Tachigi with 320 becquerels per square metre for iodine-131 and 73 becquerels per square metre for cesium-137. In the other prefectures where deposition of iodine-131 was reported, on the 27th of March, the range was from 6.4 to 110 becquerels per square metre. For cesium-137, the range from 16 to 61 um, becquerels per square metre. In the Shinjuku district of Tokyo, the daily deposition of iodine-131 on the 27th of March was 100 becquerels per square meter, while for cesium it was 36 becquerels per square meter. No significant changes were reported in the 45 prefectures in gamma dose rates compared to yesterday. 
two IAEA teams are currently monitoring radiation levels and radioactivity in the environment in Japan. One team made gamma dose rate measurements in the Tokyo and Chiba region at three locations. Gamma dose, rate, gamma dose rates measured range from 0.08 to 0.13 microsieverts per hour, which is within or slightly above the, the background level. The second team made additional measurements at distances of 30 to 46 kilometers from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. At these locations, the dose rates range from 0.5 to 3 microsieverts per hour. At the same locations, results of beta-gamma contamination measurements range from 0.2 to 0.3 megabecquerels per square meter. New results from the marine monitoring stations 30 kilometers offshore were received for seawater samples taken on the 26th of March. The levels decreased at most of the locations. For iodine-131, the concentration results for four monitoring stations are between 6 to 18 becquerels per litre. And for cesium-137, between below limit of detection and 16 becquerels per litre. The dose rates measured on the sea surface remain relatively low between 0.04 and 0.1 sorry, microsieverts per hour. Samples collected on the 26th of March, 330 metres east of the discharge point, showed increasing concentrations. There, these were found to be 74,000 becquerels per litre for iodine-131 and 12,000 becquerels per litre for cesium-137 and 12,000 becquerels per litre for cesium-134. It is st still too early to draw conclusions for expected concentrations in marine food because the situation can change rapidly. Modelling results show um, an initial northeastern transport of liquid releases from the damaged reactors. Monitoring of iodine-131 and cesium-137 in drinking water is ongoing. Iodine-131 has been monitored by the Japanese authorities in two of ten samples taken in the Fukushima prefecture with values of 60 and 90 becquerels per litre. In the in the Ibaraki prefectures, iodine-131 was detected in two of nine samples. The values were 40 and 90 becquerels per litre. If you remember, the Japanese limits for the ingestion of drinking water by infants is 100 becquerels per litre. As far as food contamination is concerned, samples reported from 26 to 27th of March in six prefectures Fukushima, Gunma, Ibaraki, Niigata, Tochigi, and Yamagata reported ID-131 in asparagus, cabbage, celery, chive, cucumber, eggplant, leek, mushrooms, parsley, tomato, spinach, and other leafy vegetables, strawberries, and watermelon. One sample of Hana wasabi taken on the 24th of March in Fukushima prefecture was above the regulation values set by the Japanese authorities. Cesium-137 was also measured above the regulation value in the same sample of Hana wasabi, but in the remaining five prefectures, cesium-137 was not detected or the results were below regulation values. Finally, uh, the joint FAO IAEA food safety assessment team met with the local government authorities in Fukushima on Sunday and discussed issues related to food contamination, including standards and sampling plan designs for radionuclides in food and food in the environment, radionuclide transfer from soil to plants, and mitigation strategies. The FAO IAA team also met with the local authority in Ibaraki Prefecture today. They will have meetings with local government officials in Tochigi and Gunma tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>